Hi and welcome to the very first episode, the world premiere of a brand new show that Sui, Viver and me are going to bring to you. So the concept of the show is very simple. We're simply going to have a Skype conversation about a certain topic and well, we're recording it and we let you see that Skype conversation. So in this very first episode, we're going to talk about the Pimax 8K and here to be more concrete about the Pimax 8K M1 edition, the very first 10 M1 headsets that are going to be sent out later this year. So Martin, that's his real name and me, are going to talk about it around one hour and well, you can simply watch it. So this show again, it's a very new show and actually it is exclusive content for our Patreons, for the people who love our content and who support it on our Patreon side. So if you would like to watch this show in the future, you could simply do so by supporting our channels, simply become a Patreon. You will see the link in the description below. It's definitely awesome because you'll get so much more awesome content, so much more content than you get if you're just like a normal subscriber. And we do that, of course, in order to finance our channels in order to keep on producing content like this. And that's why we produce special content, more content for people who would like to support it and for people who simply want to know more. And well, this first episode is free for everyone to watch, but the future episodes will be Patreon exclusive. All right, enough talk, but now let's get into the very first episode, Martin and me talking about the Pimax 8K M1. Enjoy. Yeah, man. So for yeah. this first episode of our talks, yeah, of our yeah. Martin meets Sebastian talks, I was yeah. thinking, um, why don't we talk a bit about um, Pimax 8K? Yeah, Pimax. You know, have you read the latest yes. news from today? Yes. I read them. I read them. What do you think about it? I got to tell you that I'm a little bit disappointed because I was hoping they would ship those units this week. Yes. But uh, or maybe next week, but now we, we're going to wait until May, and um, and that's what they're saying right now. So oh. it could be June, it could be wherever. So yeah, but there's a good thing about this also, and that is that they're really aiming for making a prosumer uh, product. <laughs> prosumer. That is, <laughs> yeah, good. but it's, yeah, yeah, but it's, I, I know that a uh, prosumer device, not uh, yeah. not like the Vive Pro. Yeah, exactly, and uh, <laughs> and the uh, actually said uh, in that uh, post or in that thread that they're aiming for the well exclusive or the niche uh, consumers and not the big mass. Yeah. So this so this is going to be kind of like an exclusive um, uh, well yeah. product, and I really hope that they're really spending this time now until May to really well fix the, the lost issues they have. I hope so. So too. we can. But still, it is a bit well, disappointing, right? Because, well, yeah. um, first they were so confident that they will be able to ship in January. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like yeah. super confident. They were yeah. super confident telling all the backers, yes, we can do it. And when yeah. I had the interview with Pimax, they also told me like, yeah, okay, you can get it in, in January. We're so yeah. sure about it. And then January came and they said, no, we can do it. We'll have to wait a bit longer. Right, yeah. and then March, and then in April. Now they say, okay, April. Now the M1 back, the M, the M1 testers will get it. And mm. now today, the new email. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, what did they say? Like they have a problem with their with the lenses. They want to uh, do a complete new um, design for the lenses or something. It sounds like they want to replace the lenses again, but yeah. I, th I thought they had new lenses now with the... I mean, they built a few M1 prototypes already, as far as I know. Exactly. And they were That's what I thought too. So probably they, will not, they were not satisfied with the lenses, so they decided to order new ones and yeah. So, so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's getting, it's getting confusing now, I think. It's, it's, getting, it's getting a bit confusing and I think... Yeah. More and more p people are getting a bit, um, yeah, like they don't want to wait anymore. Like, yeah, it could be. I, we can see the frustration in the Pimax forums. I mean, it's like crazy. It's becoming like a, 
<laughs> like a big uh, shout, you know, like a place where you're like uh, taking out your anger almost because there's so many people just jumping in there into the discussion and just like, where's my Pimax? I, I paid so and so much money for it. Uh, and I uh, somehow I can understand those guys because it is a lot of money and they they put those money back in, it was October, right? No, it, well, it was December, right? I think that the money were, were drawn from the accounts. I think, yes, I think December they, they drew the money from the accounts. Yeah, and now it's April, soon May, and uh, you know, we're only talking about the M1 testing units, so we don't even know where the, when the first backers are going to receive their units. Maybe it could be June, July, August, we, we don't know, so... Exactly. So it turns out to be more and more one of those typical Kickstarter campaigns, you know, because Kickstarter, the normally the, those um, campaigns, they're all very confident to deliver on time. And then, wow, everything gets pushed back because stuff happens. It has happened to most of the Kickstarter campaigns that I had backed. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, oh, it's like it, it never, it never arrives on time. This is yeah. Like, the one constant thing for Kickstarter campaigns. It never yeah. arrives on time. Yeah. What to do? I, I don't know what we can do about it. I mean, it's a Kickstarter campaign, as you say, but, but still we have, I mean, if you compare it to many other Kickstarter campaigns, they have been doing road shows. They have been showing off a product, a working product already before the Kickstarter yeah. started up. Exactly. So, so there, is, there is a proof of concept. It is working. We saw it, both you and me, and we were both kind of sold it right, right away. Wait a yeah. minute. So, exactly. So they're not, I don't know what, what's happening right now. If there is some uh, cost issues maybe. Uh, I don't know, but cost issues, I don't think so because they have just received like a 15 million funding. So um, if it's just about money, I don't think they have any problems. I really think they want to make the, the very, very super best product that they can yeah. do. Because now the real the whole world is looking onto them, right? The whole world is looking yeah. at this product. Yeah, everyone is waiting. <laughs> everyone is waiting, yeah. and everyone is like, um, yeah, super excited and anxious about this product. So they have only one shot right now. Yeah. Either they get it right, and it's an awesome product that will totally change the whole VR industry, yeah. or it's a lackluster project, and uh, people are unhappy, unsatisfied, and Pimax is gone. So oh. there's a lot at stakes for this company, right? There's yeah. so yeah, much indeed. money at stake and the whole um, future for this startup. So I kind of understand that they really want to deliver the super very, very best product. Yeah, but, I, I really think so. I really th It sounds like that when uh, Xunche is talking, I mean, the latest yeah. post, it really sounds like we could, she actually added that, well, we could have used the existing hardware from the V2 or V3 prototype, released it to the public, most of the people would have been uh, satisfied and we could have a big cash flow or something like that. Yeah. But we, we really want to deliver a better product, that's, that's what she's trying to say. And it, it can, I still believe that, it feels like if they had a prototype working, back in October already, why would they make a less good product now in May? I mean, it's, it yeah. should be a good product in the end. I also think so. But, I also but, think so. I think they really tried to just deliver the very, very best. Yeah. But still, we already thought that with the last um, lens prototype, all the problems would have been solved, right? Because yeah. they already said like with the last lens prototype, all the problems that the version 5 had were already yeah. solved. And now basically they're only waiting for the stuff. But now suddenly again, they have to change the lenses. So I think, I think there's a problem with lenses and that is the cost of uh, making them. Yeah, of course, that's a, that's a big problem. Yeah, and I mean, take for example, like DSLR cameras. There are lenses for ten thousand dollars. There are less, there are so many expensive lenses, and to make good optics, they, you really have to put the money in. And maybe I, I'm just gonna say maybe now it's just something that I, that I, I I've been thinking about it. Maybe yeah. they used a little bit more expensive lenses back in the prototype two and three, or at least the two, the, the second one we tried in Amsterdam. Mm. And it turned out to be too expensive to manufacture for a mass, mass production. 
So maybe the lenses were costing like two hundred dollars <laughs> for a pair. So I, we don't know about that. I mean, a simple Canon lens could cost thousand yeah. bucks. I mean, I have a f couple of these here. And it's nothing special with them, but they still cost a lot of money. Of course. So maybe they try to cut down the cost to make to at least make a profit of this product. I mean, everyone wants to profit. Of they course, they should make a profit with this. Yeah, I mean, without a profit, we're not going to see it on the market. It's yeah. going to be a, a Kickstarter product, and then they're like going to disappear. So. They yeah. need to make a profit out of it. Of course, it's fine. I want them to make a profit so they can yeah. keep on working on these high-end VR yeah. um, headsets. So maybe this is the reason why they tried so many lenses, to actually go down with the cost of, well, what every lens is costing when manufacturing it. So maybe they tried some very cheap ones in the V3 and some a uh, little bit more expensive but still cheaper than the first one we saw in V2. So yeah, we'll see about that. We'll, Could I don't be. know. Oh, what, I, what I could also imagine is the case. So actually, the last thing that we heard was that they actually have the M1 now in their headquarters, right? They assembled them, they got everything. Yeah. And actually, we were only waiting for them to test them in-house and then sent yeah. them out to the M1 testers, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then so we were so the, the M1 testers were waiting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think in the internal tests that they made with the M1 devices, I think they yeah. found a problem. Yeah. And I think that uh, this problem caused them to even redesign the lenses one more time. Yeah, because um, well, what I heard from them, yeah, they they do the internal test, and when they think when they think yeah. it's a great device, then they send it out to the M1 testers. Yeah, and exactly. then the M1 testers test it and tell them, hey, we also think it's a great device, and then they put it out to the market. So yeah. I believe they found something in the M1 devices that yeah. was just not good enough to send to the M1 testers. Do you think that could be the reason? Probably, probably. Maybe they, they tried some cheaper lenses, as I said. Maybe something went wrong with the new production line. It's a, I mean, there have been machines to make a big production line of thousands yeah. and thousands of units, and something could go wrong during that way, and they need to fix that. So it, it could be whatever. We don't know that. Yeah, but, that's true. But I think they're not doing this on purpose. There's, there's no reason to delay this because this would no. be actually, I mean, April or May would be the perfect time just to slam down uh, HTC, you know, uh, slam every, every one of the comp competitors just to, and release those Pimax units. And all the focus, focus would be on Pimax if they just released it now. But obviously they need to have problems because they're waiting. So there, there's yeah. a good reason for all this, I think. I, I think so too. So. Probably they just found something is not okay with the lenses, so they do yeah. the re. They they just get new lenses. I hope so. Well, yeah, but uh, <laughs> we all hope so, right? Yeah. But just like um, yeah, the the people are getting a bit frustrated now. Yeah, right. That's the problem. It's understandable. Can, it's understandable, fully understandable. I, I mean, we all want that, and we don't. They they're still tr saying that they are gonna ship in the f in the second quarter, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you mean for the M1 or what? No, 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 no. I'm talking about uh, Kickstarter, uh, the first batch for the Kickstarter. Uh, I, the Kickstarter I, don't, I don't think so. I really think they will first wait for the M1 testers to give their green light. And uh, just then would they really send out to the backers, right? That's, but, that's, that's, that's the purpose of the M1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I think I was reading today that they're still aiming for the... Oh, aiming, June. yeah, June, aiming. It's still aiming. June. Yeah, aiming, yeah. Aiming, <laughs> aiming yeah. That's wow. the well, well, they were aiming for January, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, man, man, man. That's a really... Pimax at K, man. That's, I, I really have big hopes, of course, yeah. right? Same because here, same we, here. Both, we both tried it in Amsterdam and then... I tried it later as well again in uh, Germany and yeah, it was just so promising. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something new. I mean, it's not just another headset with a bigger field, uh, with a higher resolution. It's it's the field of view. I mean, we all want that. Yes. If if, if HTC Vive could have or HTC could have released a pro version with at least a field of view of 140 oh, degrees. Oh man, let's not talk about the the, the Vive Pro. No, man, no, no, I'm no, no. so but, fucking angry about my purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know. I can fully understand <laughs> that. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bash on the the Vive Pro. I, I'm sure it's a good unit because I mean the Samsung Odyssey is a great unit as well. Yeah. But 
but still, if they would have gone gone for like 140, 130 degrees at least, then the yeah. Pimax hype could have been a little bit lower. I mean, yeah, people of course. would have realized how it is to have that bigger field of view. But now we're yeah. stuck with 110 de degrees for all the headsets. Yes, that's maximum. So well, then we really all want to know how it is to have that exactly, big field of view. Exactly. I think when the general public first tries it out for the first time. The 200 degrees, they will be their mind will be blown, right? So at the moment, people people hear like, oh, okay, Pimax 200 um, uh, degrees field of view, it sounds so awesome, should be great, and that's what I thought. Like I thought, like, okay, that sounds great, but first until the first moment that, that I had that device on my head yeah. in Amsterdam, then I then I finally saw the light. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, you know. I it's the same for you, right? It's like, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. you have to try this to believe it. It's just yeah. like for VR in general, right? If there's somebody yeah. somebody who has never tried VR and heard, hey, it's cool, they yeah. will just understand it when they first put their first headset on. Yeah. And the same with the Pimax 8K. It's just yeah. the, the 200 degrees field of view is just too mind-blowing. Yeah. It's just it's like crazy. The, it's crazy. It's quite crazy. crazy. And there is a reference, actually, you can just try to really get the feeling of 200 degrees field of view or really understand how wide it is. And you have tried it already, I saw. that The environment where you can try some test pictures and then you can yes. try the field of view. Exactly. I, have I you tried remember, it too? Yeah, I tried it today because I'm testing it out with the um, gear. Ah, okay, good. My, yes. It's the a, from the part. Spanish website, uh, Realo yeah. Vedat or... Yeah. Virtual or something. Yeah, yeah, something <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> it's a really great uh, Steam home, uh, Steam or home environment. Love it's it. free, Love it. just add it, subscribe. Exactly. I think you have to subscribe to it or something like exactly, that. And then you can, yeah, that's fine. And then you can just try to get that feel of you. And I can spoil that with the Gear VR uh, lenses on the HTC Vive, I had the exactly the same feel of you. No no okay, difference. As got it. I tried maybe 10 times, it was the same. And then I just suddenly started to look to the left or right, and it was like, 200 degrees. It's like, yeah. it's so far off to the left. And exactly. It's like, this is crazy. Am, am I going to be able to see all the way? It's you know, it's it's quite difficult to understand. See, really, how from this end to this end. Yeah. So ex exactly. So this is uh, mind blowing. <laughs> but but I um, but try out that environment and just check check how how wide it really is, because you you cannot understand that by while being in VR because you're like kind of limited with the field of view but if you start to look to the side it's gonna it's, it's quite crazy yeah exactly it's fantastic but then for the test environment I also found out that most of the official degree numbers that the that the um, headset manufacturers give are quite kind of bullshit right because when when you actually check it out on uh, in the testing environment you will yeah. find out that they have more like a hundred degrees and not 110 100 degrees Yes, indeed. Uh, 100, between 100 and 105 degrees. Exactly. Uh, and that's with 6 millimeters uh, VR covers on the HTC Vive. So. Yeah, you see, so the, re the numbers that they tell us, it's uh, bullshit. Yeah. Companies, wow, we have, good that there are people who really test it like you and me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Also, I think it's a little bit about a matter of your face. You know, some people have some more... My face? Out no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not your face. I'm talking about that. <laughs> some people have more popping out eyes, you know, like a fro yeah, cl you know, like frog like eyes. A, and then they have a bigger field of view. Yeah. I mean, these guys are lucky, man. <laughs> Do you know this guy who can make like a huge eyes? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. This guy must have like a super awesome field of view then. Exactly. But I mean, there are people that have the, their eyes quite deep inside of the face. <laughs> oh, they are fucked, man. They're going to have like 50 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing, guessing here, but, but still, I think there is a difference between people and people. I mean, between your face. So my yeah. face? <laughs> I'm kidding, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but but really, it's uh, <laughs> okay. But that's fine. That's that's the first episode of Sebastian and Martin. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, is the the closer your eyes go to the lenses, the better the field of view. Yeah. So. Yeah, they must try to get your eyes as close to the lenses as possible. However, they must still take care that you're able to wear your glasses if you wear glasses. Yeah, like, for exactly. example, with the Rift, it's I really cannot use my glasses with the Oculus Rift, for example. Oh. Anyways, anyways, we, let's let's get back to the Pimax topic. 
Yep. Because, um, yeah, <laughs> we're talking about Pimax for this first episode of our casual talk session. So, um, yeah, man, what do you think about the whole um, M1 tester thing? This kind of approach that they will send it out to those 10 testers first? I think it's a good idea that you're trying to make it. Uh, you know, the first test shouldn't actually be public because if something fails, especially the software that could be fixed in one or two days, if that fails and hundreds of people are starting to, you know, get angry in forums and the YouTube videos and everything about stuff that's not working from start, it's going to be a big wave of hate. And I think that's that saves them a lot of headache to just make okay. a short short private testing. It's a good idea. I mean, there was a lot of people in the Pimax forums that actually created that idea. I think Pimax okay. did that just because the people were oh, really? talking about so it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really listen, yeah? They really listen to the people. Yeah, yeah, they listen to all the people in there. And uh, I mean, okay. maybe, I think I read like 20 different posts about that. And okay. it is a good idea yeah. as far as it's not too long closed beta testing because people are going to get annoyed. They want to know as well. Everyone deserves to know. Of course. And, and I'm not saying that because I'm maybe a tester or you or yeah, but <laughs> I think there's a good point that saves them a lot of trouble and headache. And if they can make yeah. those small adjustments during that one week or two week or wherever that testing period is going to be, I think a lot of the biggest, you know, baby problems, I don't know what it's called, but you know, the first problems you get with a new product they could yeah. be fixed before it reaches the mass market because you're right. We are we have still like five thousand backers. Yeah. I mean, imagine if it's 5, a lot. 000, it's yeah, a lot. It's a lot of people. Imagine if five thousand backer gets it and it's suddenly not working in you know something struggles with Steam VR or some new update. You know, it's they they really want to know that it's working. That's that's probably the reason yeah. that why they are doing the close test. For sure that and I was also thinking uh, actually I also think it's a smart move. If I was them, I think that would be a really smart move. I think what they want to do, they want to contain all the problems first. They want yeah. to contain it. You know, yeah. like this like um if if the first um the first reactions are negative, well, they can contain them totally, yeah. right? Because they made the, the M1 testers um, sign this uh, non-disclosure agreement, so these guys cannot yeah. talk about anything if they make no. it terrible, if they have like a terrible um, first test with those devices and yeah. nothing works, well, it won't come out, right? Yeah. So I think it's, exactly. it's, a, it's a smart move to yeah. do it. And um, yeah, also, I think um, it, is, it is also really good for them to get the feedback from those guys who who really can can um, know the difference between headsets? Yeah, because uh, those guys are probably people who have all the headsets. Yeah, and they can probably probably really tell what works and what is what is what yeah. is good and what is not so good. However, I, yeah, go on. Yeah, no, no, I, I was just about to add that I'm sure that they have o their own in-house testers as well, and they are probably exactly. quite exactly. good at what they're doing, of course, but. The more people are trying it out, especially people with other headsets, as you say, the bigger is the chances that someone will actually find some issue or some problem or something exactly. to correct. So yeah, yeah, sure. Exactly. And um, even though they have in-house testers, it's the, th the thing, if you work on something for too long, yeah. you are already totally biased. Because you yeah. know already these kind of problems, you'll forget about them. And you have yeah. looked at this device for, for three months already. Exactly. But if you give it to some fresh eyes, yeah, to fresh some eyes. people who use it on other systems, who use it suddenly on, uh, let's say, um, computers from Poland or computers from yeah. from the UK, you know what? Not th those um, Chinese test systems that they use. Probably something yeah. totally new will come up. So yeah. I think that is that is really a good good approach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just sure. what? Yeah. Yeah. Just what I think that. Um, they must really try to communicate to the community very clearly what the M1 is and what it is not. Yeah. So I think it's very, very important to let everybody understand that the M1 is not like uh, the very first Pimax 8K. No. It's not the very first Pimax 8K, which is like uh, ready 
right? No. This is still a prototype somehow, right? Somehow, it both yes and no, and that's the problem. We don't know that. that that's the no. problem. They, they told us that it's, it's right after the beta testing they're going to do the mass manufacturing. They're going to start yeah. it off. But uh, the testing now, the closed beta testing, we don't even know what's going to happen. If there are issues that cannot be fixed with software, I mean, we don't know if this is going to be delayed. We have to be realistic as well. We don't know that, and that, yeah. that's, that's what worries me. I know. So, so uh, from, yeah. from, my, from my communication with Pimax, I heard that um, the M1 devices are prototypes. They are meant for the M1 testers to check really everything out. They are very, very close. Of course, they are very close to the real production, yeah. but um, the what the community should not expect is something like um yeah like getting the the full review of, of the m1 devices from the no, m1 no. testers yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah exactly like um I, it's not gonna happen no probably the problem is i don't know i don't still know what they are asking the m testers to do m1 testers to do. we don't even know how the tests are going to be made we don't know what they want us to test. Yeah, they will disclose it in this uh, in this in yeah. this group, right? There's this yeah. uh, this group which is only for the M1 testers, and uh, once they receive the devices, they can tell the public that they are part of the M1 group, and and then they will start with the testing. Yeah. So yeah. So I think it's a good approach to keep to contain the damage if they are bad. If, yeah. And um, yeah, you know what? But um, also, it will be really important for the community to know that those, I mean, those M1 testers are really, um, like, unbiased. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know I, what? I, I'm, I'm sure some people will, will say, you know, oh, okay, those guys get the devices first. Uh, they will just uh, hype it to the end. And, uh, well, I can just say... Um, for me, if I should be in the M1 tester group, yeah, then um, no, I will just tell everybody, and especially them, how it is. Yeah. Like if I, yeah, sure, you know, same for you, right? It's like uh, it's about the thing yeah, is telling. That, the thing is that if we are not telling the truth, we're bo we are hurting both ourselves and also we are hurting. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we are hurting our reputation, of course. We don't want to lie to people. We, I haven't been lying anything on my channel. Why should I start doing it now? And also, I'm hurting Pimax as well because if I lie about, or if I am quiet about some issues, they will never gonna know about it. And they also, it will, will get back to issues. yeah, exactly. Also, it will get back to you once once yeah. the devices get to the other five thousand and everybody finds it, and yeah. then they will ask, "Hey, Sweeviver." Yeah. Weren't you? Did you get this problem on your M1 device? Yeah, and th this is a big problem that we have already, uh, because the uh, V2 prototype we tried in Amsterdam was had enough. V3, enough. V3, V3. V2. We actually tried V2 after the. Yeah, I, after I think we tried Amsterdam. V3 already. No, no, it was V2, and after the uh, Amsterdam, the VR days, they released right after that. They released the V3, which was only shown in the New York. Ah, because really. They, they didn't. They didn't have the new V3 prototype to uh, to Amsterdam. That was the problem, and that ha that was supposed to have some improvements, but I think they actually screwed up more yeah. on the V3 than they did on the V2. So I the think there was V5. I think V5 was the prototype that they showed in New York. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. V5 was the latest one, I think. Uh, yeah. If I if I'm not right, you can correct me. Too many me. V's here. <laughs> yeah, but no. The, but still, the fact is that. We didn't see those issues because there was, the issues were not in the V2 or V3 or wherever we tested. They were not there. They were using other lenses. And then they jumped into the V5 prototype and, and suddenly we had completely different lenses, much bigger lenses. As far as I okay. know, I never tried the V5 prototype. Yeah, me neither. And there, me were, neither. there was some stretching and there was some yeah, exactly. light, yeah, no. light bleeding and everything. There were so many issues suddenly. And they, uh, we got so many, I mean, I even got emails from people asking me, by how come you didn't see those issues in the V2 prototype? And I was like, well, uh, there was no issues that back then. But suddenly they introduced new issues with new lenses. So, so yeah, I mean, we never know that. Of course, I really hope that an M1 prototype unit will not 
be better than the final unit. I mean, no, that, that no, would I be, don't think so. That would, would that would make sense. No, that would be a stupid move to make because that would no. be like hyping it up, and then when people get their units, it's going to be like a big disappointment. Exactly. So, so no, no, no. I, I think, I think, yeah, there is a risk that that people may get disappointed when they get their units. But the, the well, biggest, don't know that yet. the most important thing is that we we need to be very honest and be fully honest. Of course, I mean we'll we just do our job like always, right? Yeah, uh, tell about all the issues, everything, that, because that's going to help Pimax a lot to fix them. Yes, as soon as possible. I'm I'm really wondering um, how it's going to be once the M1 devices are in the hands of the testers. Like how much time, um, how much time will they give the testers to really test it? Because at that moment in time, I'm telling you, there will be lots of pressure on the M1 testers from the community. Yeah. yeah. They will want to know. They will want to know, hey, how is it? Yeah. How is the thing? How is it going? And yeah, okay, of course, um, um, Pimax wants the M1 guys to just keep the just keep the um, feedback um, internally there. Yeah. And uh, the M1 testers are bound by non-disclosure agreements to do so. So yeah, it's yeah. going to it's not going to happen. But still, I'm I'm quite I'm quite sure there's going to be lots of pressure on the M1 testers. And also, I'm wondering at what point will Pimax then say, "Okay, guys, now you can go." Yeah. Is it like okay, now you can now you can review that unit, that unit that you got there, or now you can tell everything to to the community? So. I think there still needs to be a bit more of communication to the M1 testers. Yeah. What do the you think? The problem is that we don't know. We don't know. We, not, we don't know anything yet. That that's the thing. We know that the ten testers. It's ten now. It's not eight. It's ten, right? And they're gonna get the units and then they're gonna test it. But if they were are supposed to do reviews or only testing or we don't know what they are asking for. Yeah. And exactly. But uh, yeah, I, I, we we cannot tell much because we don't know that. I wish I knew more. I wish I'd been speaking to to Shunsu, uh, yeah, the lady, yeah. and sh she would tell us all. But we we don't know anything yet, so it's it's too too early to ask for. I mean, we we can, and also during that NDA or during that testing period, of course, the tester are not going to be able to tell anything because if they do, they're going to break or violate the NDA and that means problems I mean it could even be become a big problem so of course so of it's, course it's serious business of course it's, yeah of it's course. confidential it's, like it's, it's confidential stuff so yeah of course and uh, I can understand it because well there's like millions of dollars at stake here it's not yeah. it's really something that can can totally destroy the whole company yeah. and it's really a big issue for for them and this could be a big milestone for the VR industry, but it could also be not so great. So it is really there's a lot of things at stake. And yeah, I'm, I yeah. just hope that they will get a good launch. And I really hope that they can make a great product. And yeah, I really hope so, too. And somehow what, what we've seen in the V2 prototype or V3, it really felt promising. So it was incredible. I'm not biased in any way. I, I really hope that the product is going to be good. I am skeptic a little bit. I'm getting skeptic because everything is getting so delayed lately. But still, I have a very hard time to believe that they're going to fail. It just feels I, like they really have to screw up hard to fail yeah, <laughs> right now. In the, they're true. in that position already, I think. It's, it's, it's exactly. I, mean, I, don't, I have a, also a good feeling that they won't screw up because yeah. until now, everything that they do seems to be quite professional i yeah. mean you know it doesn't yeah. feel like oh they are like total beginners in this no. you know it doesn't feel like this at all they no. really try to be super transparent they yeah. bring their prototypes to around the world for people to see yeah. they they uh the whole process now with the m1 testers it is like thought through yeah. you know yeah they, sure, could, sure. they could also now just um just deliver the the prototypes to everybody to the yeah. five thousand people yeah. and and take the money and, and go to the Pimax 16K. Yeah. You know what? But no, it seems like they really want to deliver a great product and yeah. and uh, work on a good reputation. Yeah. You know. I mean, on paper, this is a future product. This is a it product is. that we we're probably not going to see a 
HTC Vive version of a 200 no. field of view headset in the No, they cannot they because they cannot. It's yes. exactly totally agreed they cannot because HTC wants the mass market, right? So people yeah. don't have 1080 Ti's. No. Right? So but um Pimax is delivering products to super early adopters, super yeah. enthusiasts like you and me, right? Who are willing to pay $800 for the full set, which we did. Yeah. And actually, I think it's cheap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very. I mean, it is quite cheap, but they they have actually told us that the, it is going to be. It's not going to be so cheap at launch in the retail launch. I think it's going to be a little bit more expensive when it's finally launching in stores or an online. And so. Yeah. What do you uh, think? This, what do you think is the price going to be? What is your estimate now? The price for the full set, including the controllers and the the base stations. So we paid for that for that package. We paid seven ninety nine in the Kickstarter. Yeah, I would guess. I'm not gonna say too much because we don't know. But yeah, I would know. say that a still a still a reasonable price would be maybe ten eleven hundred or something like that. Mm -hmm. But realistically, I mean, it's it is if they can if they can deliver the the, the product there that they are really promising us. They could probably take like fifteen hundred bucks. Also, I mean, look at HTC Vive Pro. I know. We, but, we uh, get, it's yeah. like fourteen hundred. Where is it? Twelve hundred for a full box or full bundle. Yeah, and, the, and the with full that, bundle is very expensive. And the next bundle, I mean, the the the, the real HTC Vive Pro bundle with those new controllers or refined controllers be. and the uh, base stations with two point zero tracking. I think that that's, that bundle is going to be like fourteen hundred or something, or even more. I, so so I don't I don't think that Pimax is in a good position because they're doing a product that nobody else is doing. They do I mean they have a headset with four K panels. They have a headset with two hundred degrees field of view, and this is a product that really stands out from others. So they could yes. probably. Ask for like fifteen hundred dollars for a full bundle. We don't know yet. We so yeah. So I think people need to be prepared. Prepared for that. This product could be costly. I know, but but, um, but yeah, it's it's a I unique product. You. So yeah, I, I agree with you. They they could do that if the Pimax yeah. 8K is if the Pimax 8K is great. If yeah. it's really it, if it blows the HTC Pro out of the water. Yeah. Then they could go for a premium pricing like thousand five hundred, thousand six hundred, yeah, for or the even, full more. Package. Yeah, even sure. more. But you know what? I would strongly advise them against it. I would strongly advise them against it because, well, of course, it um, they would um, push away some of the some of the hardcore fans yeah. that that simply cannot afford it. Number one, and. Um, then also number two, they would probably uh, lose quite a lot of sympathies. Yeah, and I also think for their um, long-term standing now, now they have the chance to kill HTC. I'm telling yeah. you that, man. Really, the HTC Vive Pro is so overpriced, and they they made such a big mistake with with the pricing of the yeah. HTC Vive Pro. Yeah. I think Pimax could. Could land like a huge blow now to HTC yeah. if they would give a reasonable pricing. You know, if they gave a pricing that would be like uh, let's say um, the full package, like thousand dollars would be great. That would be yeah. really, yeah, really nice. Awesome. It would be awesome. Yeah. But I think even if it was one thousand one hundred, people would still think, "Wow, that's cool." It's still cheaper than the HTC Vive Pro. So if yeah. if if they can. If they can match the price of the HTC Vive Pro, including the controllers and the base stations, now with the base stations 1.0, I think yeah. people would, first of all, they would love Pimax. They would buy the Pimax 8K um, like crazy. It would sell like hotcakes, <laughs> and HTC would be in a very, very bad position if mm -hmm. Pimax went for that smart pricing, which would be on the same level as the Vive Pro pricing, with um, the bundle, the, the yeah. starter bundle. Yeah. The problem, the, 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 the question is, are they really aiming for that? But I, I hope so as well. I really hope so because this would really change the market. First it off, would. we will probably see some cheaper HTC Vives. 
We will see. Yeah, of course, of course, eventually. they have to go down. Yeah, and that's good. That's always a good thing. I'm not saying that the HTC Vive is shit because there are so many people playing with it every day, and it's I still not do. Shit I at love all. it still. My the first yeah, original. Yeah, me too. One. Me too, man. Me too. So it's not shit at all. It's not shit at all. It's a great device if you don't yeah. sweat into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> another thing. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah, okay. The thing is that I don't know if you can see this. I have two different lenses inside right now. Oh yeah, I see. I see. Uh, the uh, the left one, this one, is the Gear VR lens. Yes. This one is the HTC Vive lens. Yes. The thing is, like, I bought the Gear VR for. 40 bucks here in Sweden. This, that's the latest one, the 2017 edition. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have it too here. And it has so much better lenses than the yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. no god rays whatsoever. It's so beautiful. It's They're smaller, but you get the same field of view. You get the... the I'm not going to spoil too much. Maybe my video <laughs> is going to be up very soon anyway, so it's not doesn't matter. And a lot of people have tried this already. Okay. This is quite crazy that the spot, the sweet spot, is so much bigger. It's almost like the Odyssey, I think, um, or maybe even better. I don't know. It really feels like it's sharp all around the image, almost. I got it. Like 80% but, of it. But, but how about the focal length? Does it look more far away stuff? Tiny, tiny, but I have not added the profiles yet because there are profiles okay. for, this, uh, the, yeah. for the barrel distortion and everything. Exactly. I have not added because I'm still testing it with one, <laughs> one <laughs> lens each just to make some comparisons fast with my camera just got for it, the recording inside. So I'm going to load that profile inside later on and check if it really helps. But it's very minimal. It's maybe like 2-3% uh, further away. So everything is a, tiny, a little, little bit smaller, but not much. So. Got so it. yeah, my point here was not to talk about this, but my <laughs> point was like... You're already advertising your next video, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, it's good, it's good. You make awesome videos, man. You should advertise them. <laughs> no, but I still wonder. I'm so <laughs> mad about this because HTC Vive Pro, the new headset, is having yeah. the same lenses. Exactly the same, man. The two-year-old lenses, man, and they suck. And you can get a Gear VR for a couple of hundred uh, or a couple of bucks, hundred crowns here in Sweden. It's like yeah. 10, 20, 30 bucks, even the 2016 edition, and it's going to have better lenses. So there's seriously some problem with the HTC and their lenses, because why? I don't they get it, a, man. They, got, they have a premium product, and they're screwing it up with some cheap plastic lenses, because it's not even glass. It, the, the, the Gear VR lenses are glass. It feels like glass, at least. Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why why they came up with this. I mean, it feels like they they just needed to um, to update the Vive because it it's already dated, right? The display. So yeah. they just needed to quickly quickly get something onto the market so they can at least still compete against like uh, Samsung Odyssey, Pimax 8K, yeah. and so on and so forth. And that's also why I think. Like um, so there are so, so problems with the microphone. I cannot use it for streaming because the pop noises are too big. It's so and bad, I, right? I, f I feel like I feel like um, uh, I'm robbed of my 900 euros now. I can't even use it, mm. and I feel it's strange to 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 uh, to build some pop filter there with some cloth myself. Yeah. It's ridiculous, not for this yeah, price. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, we yeah. have to talk about this another time. So yeah, now yeah, it's still about it Pimax. <laughs> so we came to this because we were talking about the Pimax price. So I really would, I would strongly advise them not to do a cash grab, even they could. You know, they they should. I want them to make profit with the device, no problem. But you know what, um, Pimax, they want to do the best device for the VR enthusiast, right? They, that's what they always say. They want to be, they want to make the best thing for the VR enthusiast. But yeah. the VR enthusiast, they are not all rich guys, you know, like no. like you and me, you know, like, okay, I yeah. I live from my savings. I don't do anything but YouTube videos and my YouTube channel is, isn't even monetized, no. <laughs> you know? And like, we're like, we're, we love that technology, but it's not like we are rich guys. Seriously, so, uh, what's, what's wrong with YouTube? Why aren't you still monetized? Why, oh man, I'm so angry. I'm so angry at them. It's unbelievable. I write them emails like nearly every day, but they say, yeah, you are in the backlog. You're in the backlog. Until end of April, hopefully the backlog will be cleared and then we will check your ap application for monetization. Man, I'm so angry about this part. I will make a whole video. I'm telling you, if <laughs> on 1st of May, my channel yeah. is not monetized, I'm yeah. going to make a video about YouTube. 
Yeah, I you know, should, you, should. you know, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not afraid to to fight with big companies. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> it usually helps. It helps because they know people are listening. Yeah, because you, you can really, you are an influencer on YouTube yeah. now. That, that's the thing. They know that that we can really shout out to the people and people I will, I will shout it out. I'm telling you, if in May yeah. my application is not yet worked on, I will shout it out to everybody in the video. Anyways, but now how did we get to that topic? <laughs> we're talking about the pricing, about the. The yeah. thing is that we're talking about the pricing, and I'm looking at the post now from uh, Xunxu later, um, uh, earlier today, and it's like they invested between fifty and hundred thousand dollars for new adjustments. I mean, I think it's the new tooling they call it. Yeah, for the lenses and, to make the new lenses. Yeah, and this is, I mean, for me, it's a good sign want to invest into good lenses that really makes top I mean the, the optics is so important in yeah, VR and most companies don't know about that yet I think especially not HTC so they are aiming for a premium product is gonna be so uh, hopefully better than the uh, rest of them yeah so, uh, so the price yeah I mean we can expect a higher price and uh, I don't think they're even with HTC Vive here, I I know I know what you're trying to say that it could be it could be so fun if they just released a headset for one thousand bucks or eight hundred or something like that just for the same price at least as the HTC Vive Pro and just blow them away because it's gonna probably do that with the yeah. field of view and that high resolution because it is a big difference in the resolution as well in terms of I mean it's 4K per eye it's upscaling right but it's still the screen door effect is pro it's a big difference there in between. Yeah. So, so I'm I am really afraid that it's going to be a costly headset in the end, just because they are actually putting so much money and effort into those lenses, especially and all the testing and everything. I know they could do it, of course, because it's a niche product, right? It's uh, yeah. yeah, I know they could do it, but I still would advise them not to do it. But take this and become like the beloved company. Yeah, and of course, I still want them to make money. But I'm telling you, if they sell it, that that package for one thousand one hundred dollar, yeah. they still make a good profit. Sure. I'm pretty sure. The thing is that they could probably go much higher, and people will still buy it just because they are lonely on the market doing this. I mean, look yeah. at the Star VR. Look at the Star VR. I mean, it's yeah. like a three thousand dollar headset or something. It's it's not even available for people for consumers. So, yeah, I, well, I don't know. I don't know. The price is a very, it's kind of like a sensitive topic as well because you don't want to give people hopes as well either. It, just like, yeah, no, I, think, but I think the biggest rage about HTC Vive Pro pricing is because there were rumors about the HTC Vive Pro yeah. costing like three ninety nine or something. Someone was talking yeah, exactly, about that, right? Yeah. And that is yeah. like, it's so wrong to tell people that it's or true. try to fool them. Of course, so, no, no. It's just like I don't want to give people the hope. I, I just, no. you know, I, I just want to. I hope that Pimax hears like opinions from yeah. from people like you and me. And I think they yeah. will hear it. Probably they will watch this video, and I hope they will just think, just take it into consideration, not to grab the money even though they could, yeah. but instead deliver something that people who are really enthusiast, yeah. who will get it. And you know what? If they if they sell at this price, let's say one thousand one hundred dollar for the complete package, yeah. they will get so much goodwill for yeah. that device. And yeah, in the sure. end, I believe in the end it will pay out much more to to have the community love you yeah. than to take the money now and yeah, and then not be as loved. You know, like SGC yeah. now. They they went for the cash grab now. Yeah. And yeah, that's you know what? I'm telling you, it's game. going to, it's going to yeah. backfire dearly because before yeah, they sure. had fanboys who loved them so much for making these awesome products, yeah. but they're even losing those fanboys now yeah. because they can tell, hey, this device is not worth that money. It's a cash grab. They don't care about the community, yeah. and then they also see like how bad the the HTC um, customer service is, and now the goodwill is gone. Yeah. Yeah, but this is another this is another question, Martin. Yeah. What do you think about what do you think about the the customer service from Pimax? What do you think? How is it going to going to be? Do you think they will be able to deliver 
like uh, customer service that's on the line for this kind of expensive device? I hope so. Um, we need to understand that uh, that's all the service and all the you know if you get issues you need to send it back. Everything is usually, uh, I mean, a little bit included into the price of the headset. This is how it works. I mean, in in, in the industry, they all, they always cover a little bit of the cost for the support and everything in the headset. So I really hope that they have that in mind when releasing this, so that they have that money to really invest in a support, a big support team, because they will probably need a big support team, especially in the beginning. We yeah. are going to see issues probably, especially with support and so, with some software and so. Yeah. I'm not talking about any hardware failures or so, but I'm talking about all the software. I mean, contacting support, not only when, this, when the headset is breaking, it's they're contacting them when they cannot even get it to run or if they exactly. struggle to start up SteamVR or something. So they need to be prepared to have a big support team from the beginning because with a totally new headset there will be issues. Small issues maybe, maybe issues with stuff like Revive or Oculus Home, stuff that's not even supporting, uh, stuff exactly. that are not even working but people are expecting them to work. Agreed. So yeah, so someone needs to be there to answer that call and tell them at least that no this isn't this is going to be something that's going to be added later or whatever just regular support yeah so exactly but if they're going to live up to that we don't know we, we I, I think it's going to be idea. tough <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be tough for a startup but well the good yeah. thing is they they don't have so so many devices i mean not so many people are going to have that unit like you know vive like it's probably hundred thousands of people yeah. who have the problem now but uh, okay now it's like what 5000 people yeah. But of course, they have to grow, right? They really have to grow and they have to work on customer service relationship management. Mm -hmm. They have to um, build like a, a world company from scratch, which is yeah. tough. Yeah, it's very tough. I don't know. I mean, it's not a new company. They made the Pimax 4K before, but I have, yeah. I have no idea how that worked. I've never had that headset. Me neither. Not into that headset at all. So I wish I was because then I would at least know more about the business how they were running the business before with support and everything. Yeah. Maybe some know, other man. people, you guys out there watching this, maybe you know more about this, but we, I don't. It's like very hard to know how the support and everything is going to be. And warranties Great, yeah. as well. I mean, it's a Chinese company. I'm not saying it's more difficult to send it back, but yeah, yeah. they need to I, fix it. They maybe need some kind of headquarter in Europe as well, or America or something, I don't I know. So. And uh, how about repairs? Are they going to have yeah. a repair center in Romania? What happens if you sweat into it? Yeah. <laughs> Is it going to break? How about the warranty? Will it cover sweat damage? Wow, there's a lot, there are lots of questions here, man. Yeah. There, are, there will always be broken units. I mean, of there, course. out of thousands of units, there will always be something like dead on arrival or yeah. someone just dropped his headset. But people are going to watch them now very, very carefully how they deal with it, you know. <clears throat> yeah. So this is going to be this is going uh, this is another crucial thing that, that I would advise the Pimax team to really take care of very, very well. Oh, so yeah. you know, you just send it to one influencer and one influ influencer breaks it by sweating into it, and he, if he has a bad experience, probably is going to make a big video on YouTube. <laughs> you know, there have been such cases. So. <laughs> Definitely, they must be really, really careful and really try to deliver a great customer service as well. So it's really, it's really not just about the device. If the device is awesome, it's great. But if you if you get it, it breaks and you are you are you are there stuck with your dead Chinese Pimax 8K that nobody's going to repair for you. Yeah. You're going to hate it. Yeah. So and also, we have to be honest that okay, content creators like YouTubers and Twitchers and all that. They will always be a little bit more special treated. We know that already. I mean, if you shout out, you're going to get help in the end. But there are so many people out there that never get that help. Yeah, I know. Uh, like, I mean, regular people like my brother or something. Uh, regular people. We're all regular <laughs> people, of course. But people that do not have maybe the YouTube audience channels, yeah. to shout out to. But yeah. the thing is that we're, uh, we're almost forgetting about reddit for example reddit is huge i mean those groups or those channels or reddits called the subreddits 
they're so huge. So if someone has a problem with HTC Vive, for example, or HTC or Oculus, if when they shout out, they could get like thousands of upvotes and readers and everything. So in the end, all, most of the people have the power to actually shout out to the audience. Yeah, of course, of course. So anyways, okay. it's just a really, really important thing that they have to take care of, the customer service. It's, yeah, really, part, it's really part of the overall um, overall experience. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the one part that I'm not happy about with HTC, and everybody knows that, even though I think their the devices are good and stuff, but yeah. the community is starting to feel unhappy about it. Especially yeah. if you if you pay such high prices, right? And it's probably going to be very similar with the Pimax, probably also going to be high priced. So then they must deliver with the customer service. And it's going to be a tough a tough thing to start this from scratch. But well, yeah. I don't know. I didn't have the Pimax 4K. You also didn't yeah. have the Pimax 4K. It would be great to hear from people who had the Pimax 4K, how it worked if something went south, right? Yeah. There has been a lot of issues, as far as I know, with the p yeah. 4K. In terms of software, especially, there were some okay. issues with the software and so. But I think that most of the things have been fixed. Okay, it maybe it took one year or so, but they they have been constantly working on that. And also, there has been some people doing a lot of software or tweaks and the coding for. Uh, I don't know what they're called. They're not beta testers, so they're like modders or coders. Okay. They have been con contributing to the community and uh, helping out to fix the software as well. So, I see. So yeah, I I, I really hope that Pimax takes this series. This time, this is going to be much bigger. Pimax 4K was just a. Sorry, that was just my cat. <laughs> like, and for the with the 4K, it was a very niche product back then. It didn't yeah. have even the, I mean room scale or anything. So most people. Was not even caring about it. Exactly. Now Pimax 8K is going to be a huge product, probably better than most of them out there, or probably the best of them so far. If it delivers, if it does, though, I'm not going to tell you that it is going to deliver, but if it delivers, so. it's going to be the best one, no doubt. Yeah, so of then they're going to have so much pressure on them with this port, with everything working. So, so they need to really think about that, as you say, and it's a good advice to them. So, so to really take mm -hmm. care of the customers to really take care of, well, the growing audience because people are going to find them now. Of course. Very soon. Exactly. <laughs> of course. Everybody who's into VR will know about them. Yeah. Then also the question, okay, let's say all the Pimax 8K backers, they got their unit. So the next thing is all the people who, who missed the Pimax 8K Kickstarter, they want to get a device. So first, it's going to be about pricing. We talked about that already. But the next thing is going to be um, how will the how will they sell the device? Are they going to sell it on their website? Are they going to find some channels like Amazon.com, or have you heard anything about it, Martin? Not yet. I haven't Not even yet. heard about how they're going to deliver them, because that's also a problem. It's uh, there. I don't know if they, if they are going to send it from Asia or if they're going to have some couriers or something in Europe or no in idea. the USA. No idea. No idea. Because the European customers don't want to pay 25 or 20 percent exactly. in tax, import taxes, and charges. Exactly. No, there will be a big letdown. No, I don't think they can make it like that. I remember. I mean, even before the Kickstarter started off, they were talking about that that they will probably have some kind of hubs or whatever they call it in Europe, maybe in Netherlands or something. Yeah. Just just like uh, HCC has, they have in the Netherlands and Czechoslovakia exactly. also, I think. So probably they're gonna sell. Uh, ship big containers with those headsets over there so. and then they're going to send them out uh, around Europe and, and the America of course. I think so but so. then um, do, do you think that we still have to pay extra? Import charges no not if they have a hub or something in Europe then they yeah. are going to take care of that on their own I mean I it's see. like a big thing. But then they must yeah. pay it. <laughs> I think they're going to solve it this way that the retail version of the Pimax 8K is going to be more costly in Europe than it is yeah. in the USA and China, oh, for like example. Like always. Like, we always, like always. I mean, we always yeah. pay the price here, man. 
to yeah, beat I Europe. Mean, I mean, a single HTC Vive Pro headset without anything, it's like 1100, yeah. 1200 bucks here in Sweden. And it's 800 in, Euro in the United States. So it's always going to be the same. So that is what's actually covering the costs for the import charges. Probably, yeah, I think and so. Everything. I think so, yeah. And the transportation, of course. Wow, well. they have so many, they have so many um, problems to solve, man. It's, it's really like a huge, huge thing. So it's, uh, yeah, and now, you know, normally we don't see what is behind a product launch. We just see the, the final finished product and we think it's normal, right? But now, yeah. thanks to Kickstarter, we are like involved into the whole process and what is yeah. actually behind launching a product. So now it's the this first time. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool, but it's not so cool that we have to see how long it takes, right? This is the downside of it because now we finally understand how it is to actually manufacture and easy, make man. this product from start. It's not it's easy. Because usually we get an announcement, oh, HTC Vive Pro is coming, and then like two weeks later you can order it and it's exactly. out. But there has been so much work behind that and delays yeah. and everything. I mean, every headset has delays. Just like the Oculus Rift had with the Kickstarter, HTC Vive probably had delays as well. So, so it's, it's just the pro frustrated and annoyed and angry because yeah, of course the expectations and waiting yeah. so long expectations yeah. get higher and uh and uh yeah it's it's a, it's not easy it's it's really a different thing now the whole yeah. the whole kickstarter thing yeah but it's good to also to know the whole see the whole picture i mean yeah, it's, it's interesting it's, it's not the, i mean everything is not about just my headset that i'm gonna have here at home i mean we're talking about thousands of headsets and it's not like a Chinese guy like assembling it. It's like it's a whole full manif uh, like a big factory making those. There are robots probably doing all a lot of stuff. There's, there's so much preparation, so everything yeah. actually is working. So it's, it's a big process, and I think most people are not even thinking about how much steps you need to take to make that product out or uh, yeah, <laughs> release it to the public. Also, exactly. you have. A, Quality, what is it called? Quality checking, right? Is it? Yeah, quality assurance. Yeah, I think they were mentioning something about that in today's post that they're gonna have like kind of like a top notch uh, quality check. Uh, I don't even remember where it was, but it feels like it seems like they're really aware of the fact that they need good quality checking because usually China is known for having a little bit poor quality checking on products yeah. because a lot of products but are I think now that China. I know, but they're getting better. Uh, actually, yeah, I think they're really like awesome products now from China. Yeah, I think before, yeah, today, yeah, you know, but, yeah, before it's true, man. But really now, like all the Xiaomi products that I have, man, they are just like Apple products. Yeah, but the thing is that people don't understand it. The reputation yeah. is still bad from China, from Asia. Uh, to, I mean, but everything we have is from from China. Yeah, that's the <laughs> thing. Everything. That's the thing. Everything is made in Taiwan. Everything, made in China, all made iPhones, in all the stuff. Yeah. Everything, man. Exactly. Your headphone, every my head, my headphone, everything. Yeah. My webcam, everything is made in China, man. Even even the clothes we wear. <laughs> yeah, oh man, okay. <laughs> exactly everything. Probably even the green screen behind you. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I actually ordered it. I don't even know where. <laughs> it <laughs> looks good, man. It's it's like so 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 flat for me. Uh, it does. It's uh, very cheap. <laughs> I have a secret. I have a secret. If you want to know it. Yeah, I know. I want to know it. Spray. Uh, you have like a, a bottle. Uh, water yeah, spray. spray. You know the ones you can use. Like, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Just spray with full of water. It's gonna mm -hmm. look terrible the first hour. I, I told that actually to Cass and Sherry, the other YouTubers. They did yeah. that, and they, it was like magic. It was totally straight, without any wrinkles, and so. Okay, nice. So I'm going to Just spray a lot of water on it <laughs> once, and then you wait for like five hours, and then you do it again. So do that before you go to sleep, and then you wake up and you do it again. And then I have uh, a great green screen. Yeah, and like two, three days, and it's going to be perfect. As long okay. as it's hanging down and you're not yeah, like hanging. holding it or something. No, no. So. Okay. Cool. So, Man, anyways, now we have already talked for more than one hour. And actually, I was thinking <laughs> we should just talk like for 30 minutes for, yeah. for these talks. But I think it's, it's a, I, like, I like the concept of the show, man. We just talk a bit about stuff. Uh, indeed, I, I really enjoy this. I mean, this is the first time I'm doing it. It's not live. I hope we can go live with this kind of stuff. Yeah, so. we will. We will, for sure. 
I, I but, feel very unprepared here today. Everything is a mess, weird. you know, everything. But you know what? I think that's also interesting. Like people, I'm not going to edit this a lot, you know? No. Actually, I think I will just let it flow and people can just follow our conversation. Yeah. And uh, probably I'm going to put some time codes. If they want to see a certain topic, they can just click on it. Yeah, sure. But in general, I just want to leave it like this because, you know, this is going to be in general for the fans, for the patrons who want to who want to support us, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's it's a corner for them. Okay, this first episode I'm going to put for everyone, but then starting from the second episode, yeah, we can we can do it one episode on your patron, the, the next episode on my patron, and just like like this. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. We're gonna have we're gonna have public live streams as well, guys. So don't of worry. <laughs> it's yeah, gonna yeah, be exactly. a lot of stuff. <laughs> exactly. We're going to have lots of awesome content. Yeah. Yeah, sure. man. I think I think for the first show, for the first call, for the first Martin and Sebastian call, I think um, it's good for now. What do yeah. you think? It was awesome. It was, <laughs> it was so good. Fun. It was fun. Yeah. It's funny. I, I I was a little bit nervous in the beginning. I gotta tell you. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> It's just but, like we just talk and we we happen to record it and then gonna show it to everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I had in my mind all the time that okay, someone is gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's like, gonna watch that later. Yeah. yeah, you know my English is so bad sometimes. No, it's, man, it's, it's quite it difficult feels to really. Like all prepare. Swedish people speak perfect English. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, good, perfect. So it's uh, it was a very cool first talk, um, and I'm going to sit down now and edit it a bit and try to. Post it as soon as possible. Thank you, man. It was really fun. Thanks so much for that. And I really look forward for more of these episodes. Yeah, we will. It's gonna we be will. So. For our patrons. <laughs> All right. All right, man. So guys, yeah. I wish thanks you guys for watching as yeah, well. Thanks for watching. Exactly. And um, yeah, um, Martin, I wish you a great evening. Thank you. You too, man. Later, man. Good evening to all of you. Bye -bye. And subscribe, like this video, and yeah, everything. All the thing. All the thing. <laughs> As always. As always. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. And that was the world premiere and the very first episode of our yet to be named talk show. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you have not yet subscribed to Sweeviver or me, then of course do that right away. I'm going to put the links in the description below. And of course, if you want to see this kind of content in the future, please do consider to support us, become a patron and well, support this kind of VR and AR content. I think it is definitely worth it. And yeah, I hope to see you on the Patreon soon. The link is in the description. But now that's really it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to Mixed Reality TV yet, do so now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye.